we learned some more details over the weekend about the more personal consequences of the sun splashing a photo of Matt Hancock snogging his aide. Part of that is that Hancock, as well as leaving his job, has left his family. The Sunday Times report that Hancock told his wife he was leaving her on Thursday evening immediately after he learnt his affair was about to be exposed. He even woke up their youngest child, aged eight, to break the news. Martha Hancock had had no idea her husband was cheating on her with his university friend and had considered their marriage happy and stable. Now, Matt Hancock left his wife to be with his now former aide, who also left her husband over the weekend. Both parties had three children. Um, Now, sources quoted in the papers all agree that this is now a serious relationship between Matt Hancock and Gina Colodangelo. A friend is quoted in the Mail on Sunday describing them as a, quote, love match. Um, However, there are conflicting accounts as to how long they've been together. So according to the Sunday Times, insiders believe the affair had been going on for months by the time the covert video was recorded on May the 6th. That has been um, contradicted in the Mail on Sunday. They quoted friends who said they'd only been seeing each other for six weeks. Now, the timing here matters not just for the sake of, you know, it's interesting how long have they been together, how long has the affair been going on, but it also has some quite serious political ramifications because if they've been together for a long time, then it's quite possible that when Matt Hancock appointed Colodangelo to be an executive, a non executive director of the Department of Health, they were already in a relationship. If they've only been together for six weeks, then obviously, you know, that wouldn't be the case. They were already close friends. So in any case, it probably should have been declared. But it's obviously clearly more serious if they are in a romantic relationship and it was not declared. It's, I mean, it's going to be difficult for us here and now to decide which one is true. You might think, though, that if you have left your wife and kids in the case of Matt Hancock or left your husband and kids in the case of Colodangelo, that would be a surprising thing to do if you've only been together for six weeks. So it's potentially more plausible that they have been together for a long time, which would raise the question of were they in a relationship when she was appointed to this well-paid and very significant role. Worth also saying that in any case, um, the simple facts, fact Matt Hancock has left his wife to set up a life with his former aide has apparently annoyed local conservatives so much um, that insiders believe he could get deselected by West Suffolk members before the next general election. That was in the Times. To be honest, I'll believe that when I see it. Um, Ash, I want your take on this because some people might think, oh, you guys, you're dabbling in gossip. Why are you talking about Matt Hancock leaving his family? Mm. On many levels, though, the relationship between Matt Hancock and Colodangelo and you know how serious it was, how long it has lasted, does have some serious political ramifications, doesn't it? Well, yeah, it does. And the first thing that I want to say is that people's personal lives are messy. All right. None of us would like it if you went digging through decisions we've made and, you know, late night texts we've sent. Something embarrassing would be in there. All right. People are disgusting. That's just the way of the world. And so this isn't coming from a perspective of saying having an affair alone should disqualify you from high office because I don't think that. But what I do think is the really critical thing here is did the nature of their relationship mean that there wasn't the correct oversight in hiring her in the first place because she had her parliamentary pass not through uh, Matt Hancock but through Lord Bethel through somebody else there was no record of her appointment uh, back in March and then also you've got this question of what her role was as a non-executive board member at the Department of Health it was to monitor and to uh, scrutinize what was going on in the department that and that includes Matt Hancock uh, himself so one that means that at any point them having an affair means that she cannot be trusted to do the job that she is paid with taxpayers money to do and two if the affair was going on before she was hired and also before she uh, had her role as an unpaid advisor to the Department of Health well then it means that there was deceit, that there was attempts to conceal the true nature uh, of the hiring and why it might have been that Matt Hancock would have wanted her around. And also it would have concealed the fact that she cannot do, cannot be trusted to do the jobs that she's brought in specifically to do. 
And then you've also got this business of, you know, chumocracy, or as I just like to call it, corruption uh, more generally, that you can get these lucrative contracts if you've simply got the mobile phone number of Matt Hancock, or if you used to like run a pub that he liked to go to. Gina Colodangelo's case, it's, well, maybe he fancied me since university. And here I am, I'm a director uh, at, what's it, Luther Pendragon? Is that the lobbying firm? Who represent amongst their clients uh, British Airways and Accenture, both who won contracts with the Department of Health during the pandemic. Um, you know, it, is this again, uh, somebody who's got the right kind of relationship, who's in the personal good books of the health secretary, getting unfettered and improper access in order to essentially squeeze a government department of taxpayer money so it can be funneled away to private interests, right? And that's why the affair matters. It's not just about, you know, whether or not you consider somebody who has an affair beyond the pale. It's actually about what is concealed within that whole tawdry cloud. In terms of what Louf of Pendragon do, the Guardian, um, in their description, say they, they specialise in crisis and reputation management. Um, so wow. presumably she'll have a lot of, of work to do over the next couple of days. Mm -hmm.